Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shivangi Mishra. Here the top stories we are tracking for you. India and Singapore launched real-time link for cross-border payments. Pakistan approves IMF dictated mini-budget to impose additional taxes. Sri Lanka's election commission tells Apex Court it lacks funds to hold polls. And now for all the details. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Singapore counterpart Lee Sian Lung on Tuesday witnessed the virtual launch of a real-time link to facilitate easier cross-border money transfers between one of the world's biggest recipients of remittances and in financial powerhouse. PM Modi said the linkage will especially help migrant workers, professionals, students and their families. Transfers of funds will now be possible using just mobile phones due to the tie-up between India's Unified Payments Interface, UPI, and Singapore's PayNow facility. Such cross-border transfer arrangements typically lower costs of payments. To begin with, an Indian user can remit up to 60,000 Indian rupees or nearly 725 US dollars per day. Cross-border retail payments and remittances between India and Singapore currently amount to over 1 billion US dollars annually. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's parliament on Monday approved the Supplementary Finance Bill, also known as the Mini-Budget, seeking to impose additional taxes of 170 billion rupees. The bill is aimed to fulfill the demands set by the IMF, a crucial bailout to avoid an economic meltdown. Pakistan's National Assembly on Monday approved the International Monetary Fund or IMF dictated finance bill, also known as the mini budget seeking to impose additional taxes worth 170 billion rupees with minor amendments despite lacking the quorum in the House. Finance Minister Ishakdar said the global lender initially wanted the government to raise more than 800 billion rupees from tax and non-tax measures and that it took Finance Ministry team 10 days to convince the fund to bring it down to the minimum level of 170 billion rupees. Reacting to the criticism over the move, Dar said the country is in difficulty and termed the taxes unavoidable. ये जो इजाफा है ये चानक बहुत बड़ा इजाफा है इसका इंपैक्ट सिर्फ हमें ये नहीं होगा कि सड़क पे जो गाड़ियां चल रही हैं वो मुतासिर होंगी या एक आम आदमी का बाइक मुतासिर होगा बल्कि पेट्रोल की कीमत बढ़ने से हर चीज की कीमत में इजाफा होगा महंगाई की जो सूरत हाल है अगर आप ये कहें जी कि पहले सिर्फ गरीब तबका मजदूर तबका दिहाड़ीदार तबका मुतासिर हो रहा था तो अब वो वाइट कलर लोग भी इससे मुतासिर हो रहे हैं जो कि बड़ी ही बेहतर गुजारा कर लेते थे before presentation of the bill on February 15, the government had already implemented 115 billion rupees worth of taxes through two notifications. The critical IMF bailout program has been installed since last year. Last Friday, IMF chief Kristalina Georgieva also advised Pakistan to take steps to ensure that its high earners pay taxes and only the poor get the subsidies if it wants to function as a country. Moving on. Pakistan's opposition PDI chairman Imran Khan got respite from arrest till 3rd of March after the Lahore High Court granted the former premier anticipatory bail on Monday evening. Khan has number of cases registered against him ranging from gathering illegal funds for his political party to inciting violence against state officials. Pakistan's former premier and opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan was on Monday granted bail by Lahore High Court, providing him respite from arrest for two weeks in a case which involves charges under the Pakistan's anti-terrorism laws. Khan, who arrived at the Lahore High Court late in the evening, came along with hundreds of supporters escorting his vehicle as a display of strength for the former premier. Local media reported that the one-page order states, in the interest of justice, 
we are inclined to grant him ad interim anticipatory bail protective in nature until March 3rd to enable him to approach the court of first instance. The case pertained to alleged violence by his supporters during protests last year, which Khan is charged with inciting. The former Prime Minister has a number of cases registered against him since being ousted from power last year in a parliamentary vote. The cases range from gathering illegal funds for his political party to inciting violence against state officials. While Khan blames the ruling coalition for cracking down on him and his party, the government has denied the allegations, saying it is not interfering by any means in various cases against him. The Taliban on Monday called on the international community to recognize the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, claiming that if recognized, the concerns and complaints of the foreign governments will be addressed in a better way. Local media quoted Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid saying that if some powerful world countries prevent the recognition, the rest of the countries in the world should not follow them. This comes as the Taliban-led Ministry of Economy said that the lack of recognition of the Islamic Emirate since it seized power in 2021 has caused challenges in the country. Foreign governments have refused to recognize the Taliban administration, with some diplomats saying that it must change course on women's rights first. Many countries have expressed major concerns over girls over the age of 12 being stopped from attending school or university and restrictive edicts targeting women. Sri Lanka's Election Commission on Monday informed the Supreme Court that it is difficult to conduct the local body polls scheduled for March 9 due to the country's current economic crisis. The lawyers for the commission filed a plea citing the inability expressed by the finance ministry to release the funds required and the reluctance on the parts of authorities to enhance the fuel quotas for election work. The Supreme Court would hear a petition calling for the postponement of the election on February 23. The ruling party leaders have been justifying the postponement of the polls as focus must be made for the economic recovery. The opposition has accused the incumbent leadership of fearing the election. The island nation has been hit by an unprecedented financial crisis due to a severe paucity of foreign exchange reserves, which also sparked a political turmoil last year, leading to the ouster of the powerful Rajapaksa family. Tibetans in India's northern hill town of Dharamsala on Tuesday held special prayers to mark Losan, their traditional New Year festival. The first year of the New Year is mainly dedicated to spiritual heads and teachers. Tibetans in exile in India's northern hill town of Dharamsala on Tuesday held special prayers to mark Losar, their traditional New Year. The sound of the traditional trumpet accompanied by hand symbols played by Tibetan Buddhist monks filled the air as people of the community dressed in traditional costumes, prayed and participated in a variety of religious ceremonies for good harvest and rain. On the first day of the New Year, which is mainly dedicated to spiritual heads and teachers, Buddhist monks offer Thormas a ceremonial cake to Paldil Lamo, a Tibetan goddess. Actually, today is the uh, first, uh, first day of the Lunar Tibetan New Year. So we celebrate uh, by doing uh, the uh, protector prayers, uh, especially, uh, especially the Paldin Lamo, the main, uh, main protector of the Tibetan government in exile or Tibetan government in general, and uh, especially the protector of Dalai Lama. So we prayed for the Paldin Lamo and also for the local spirit to have a good uh, harvest and good uh, rain. Uh, yeah. Definitely, I would you know, have in my heart our people inside Tibet and pray that uh, and look forward to a day that uh, we are unified together under the leadership of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Up to 100,000 Tibetan Buddhists live in exile in India 60 years after their spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, took refuge in the country after a failed uprising against Chinese rule. Scores of animal lovers gathered in India's Noida city recently to participate in a pet show where dogs and cats of various breeds walked the ramp. They even gave them an opportunity to understand their pets and their needs better. Take a look. 
animal lovers in India gathered in northern Noida city to participate in the pet show named Pet Gala, where dogs of various breeds, including Labradors, Doberman, Pug and Golden Retrievers, walked the ramp this past weekend. While around 400 dogs participated in the event held at the International Trade Expo Center in Noida, nearly 250 cats took part in a feline championship. Saki Pathan, president of the Feline Club of India, said that the event was planned as a get-together between cats and dogs. We are here at the Pet Gala for the first time and my champion boy has already won three prizes. We had an amazing time. Uh, it's a good weekend getaway with your pet where you can enjoy fun activities and have some, spend some quality time with your pet and make them socialize with other pets as well. Since mine was very antisocial, coming here really helped. He's gotten along with dogs and people. The pet gala marked the biggest pet show in the North Indian city. Pet parents said while they spent quality times with their dogs and cats, the event also gave them an opportunity to network and understand their animals and their needs better. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.